In this video, we will show you how to replace your fuel injector. On this Honda Accord, you'll have four of these located along the top of your engine. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. Make your way inside the passenger compartment. Along the driver's side outer kick panel, you're going to find where your fuse box is located. Go ahead and grab onto this area and separate it. Once you have that cover off of there, you want to pay attention to the legend, which is located on the back side of it. Now, once you have it out of there, you're going to want to pay attention to the back side of it. That's where the legend is. We're looking for fuse number 19. It's a 15 amp labeled as fuel pump right here. Go ahead and make your way into this area and remove that 15 amp fuse. The 15 amp fuse that we're looking for is in the center and it's this one closest towards the front here. You can see there's two 15 amps right next to each other. We'll remove the forward one. Once you have it out of there, just go ahead and give it a quick inspection. Make sure it's not burnt or has an issue. After that, we'll set it aside for one second and attempt to start up the vehicle. The next thing we'll do is start up the vehicle. You may find that it starts and stalls or it just doesn't start at all. Now that we've removed fuel pressure from inside of the lines, let's put the fuse back, put the cover back on here and make our way to the fuel cap. Make sure it's fully installed. Remove your fuel cap. That'll help prevent pressure being made inside of the system so we can make our way up into the engine compartment. We'll make our way to the negative battery terminal, use a 13 millimeter to disconnect it. Now we can make our way to removing the cover that's across the front of the engine. You'll find that you have two 10 millimeter headed mounting nuts. We'll remove each of those and remove the cover. Set that aside. Before we continue any further in this area, you need to pay attention. Double check to make sure there isn't any dirt or debris in the area where your fuel injectors are located. Once you pop them out of there, you don't want anything to fall inside. We'll just use some compressed air. Now this is where we'll separate the line from the fuel rail. In this area, You'll find that you have two green locking tabs, one up along the top where my thumb is and the other ones down along the bottom on the opposite side. Squeeze those together and gently pull the line off of the fuel rail. Keep in mind there could still be some fuel or even a little bit of pressure in the system. We'll put a rag under here, squeeze those tabs together and separate the line. Let's continue on to some electrical connectors. For this one, we'll be squeezing in on the locking tab along the top. Gently pull it out of place, a quick check for corrosion, set it aside. Now we'll start disconnecting each one of the fuel injectors, making their way down the line. For this, you'll find that you have a locking tab on each side of the connector. Squeeze the two in towards each other and then disconnect it. Quick check for corrosion, set it aside as you go. Now let's make our way right here with a 10 millimeter to disconnect these ground wires. In between the fuel rail and the intake, you'll find that you have two 12 millimeter headed mounting nuts holding the fuel rail down. Remove the pair. Both of those are the same. Now we can start removing the wiring harness from across the top of the fuel rail. To do this, you'll find that you have two locking areas. Use a small pocket screwdriver. Get in between the locked area here and gently separate it. Once you've done so, you can take hold of both pieces and gently start separating them. Now at this point, we'll lift up on that fuel rail and remove it from the vehicle. 
let's get this over to the bench. Once you have the fuel rail out of the way, we'll be back at the engine, having a look at exactly where each one of those fuel injectors came out of. Commonly in the intake, you're going to find that you still have your rubber O-ring in place, and below that, there's a small plastic piece. You have to make sure that you remove both of those from each area that you are replacing the fuel injector. You can use an angled pick to remove these, just be extremely careful not to damage the engine. Plastic piece can be a little bit more difficult than the rubber O-ring. There's that one. The next thing we'll do is clean out the port right here and get ready for installation. To clean this out, you can carefully use a rag with some parts cleaner. Just work it around in there, or you can use a bore brush. If you're using a bore brush, make sure you're spinning it in a way that it's drawing the debris up and out rather than pushing it down and in. Now that we've finished cleaning this one over here, you want to pay attention to each and every one making their way across the engine. If you're only replacing the one fuel injector, you still need to remove the O-ring from inside of each of the ports and clean them out. Put a little bit of lubricant on that O-ring and put the O-ring onto the fuel injector, which is already on the fuel rail. We'll use a small pick, carefully pull this out of here without causing any damage to the engine. Clean the area, give it a quick inspection. We'll do the same to all. We'll get ready to replace our fuel injector on the rail itself. Make sure you know exactly which fuel injector you're replacing. Now for these, you'll find that you have a metal clip holding the fuel injector in place to the fuel rail. Go ahead and remove the clip and slide the clip out of place. We'll set that aside. Take hold of the fuel injector and the fuel rail, give the two a quick wiggle and separate them. Could still be fuel in this area. There it is, friend. Move along to reinstalling your fuel injector. Make sure you have the electrical connector facing in the same direction as each of the others. With that pressed into position, we'll continue on with our locking clip. Once you have it on there, take hold of that fuel injector and try to remove it from the fuel rail. Assuming it doesn't pop out of there, continue on doing the exact same thing to each and every fuel injector, whichever ones you're replacing. Now let's make our way over to the bench where the fuel rail and the fuel injectors are. Clean and inspect your O-rings. Replace them as necessary. We'll be taking the O-rings and sliding one over each of the fuel injectors that we are not replacing. We'll just make sure each one of these gaskets is secured. Now, as you'll notice, the fuel injector that we are replacing looks a little bit different than all others. That's because the very tip of it, this area here that we removed from the intake, is still in the intake. So we'll just be sliding this in to this piece that's already in the intake. Let's get this over to the vehicle. As we bring this in here, we'll be coming underneath this hose Align the fuel injectors with each of their holes, and then we'll gently press it into position. Now we can put this fuel rail down in position on the intake. Make sure you have a little bit of clean motor oil on each one of these O-rings. That'll help it slide into place. As we're aligning the fuel injectors, we'll also be aligning our studs with the mounting holes on the fuel rail. Just take your time with this, you don't have to rush. We're double checking to make sure each one of the O-rings is secured, and we'll press this down. Once you've confirmed that you fully pushed down the fuel rail and each and every one of your fuel injectors is completely connected to the fuel rail and the intake down below, we'll continue on with our two 12 millimeter nuts. Start them on by hand, snug them up, and then torque those to 16 foot pounds. Triple check that fuel rail. This is nice and secure. Now, while I'm coming along the top of the fuel rail, we'll be paying attention to these locking tabs. 
swing the wiring harness over, align the mounting points, and lock it in. We want to make sure that this is secure so it doesn't move around on us while we're driving down the road. We don't want anything getting damaged. Double check that to make sure it's secured all the way across. Now we'll continue on with our electrical connectors. Starting from one end, we'll make our way all the way over. As you go, listen for a click, give it a light tug to make sure it is secured. A loose connection will cause a runnability issue. Now we'll make our way over here to the ground wire. We need to pay attention to the intake and to the wire itself right on the connector. We want to look at both sides of that connector and ensure that it's clean and free of any debris or corrosion. Go ahead and give it a quick sanding with some sandpaper. We'll do the intake as well just along this point. We want to have good contact. Get that in position, aligning the mounting bolt hole, start in the mounting bolt and snug it up. Right there is bottomed out. Let's make sure it's nice and tight using a short ratchet. We don't want to break it, we just want to make sure it's tight to the intake. Now we can reattach the fuel line to that fuel rail. As we bring this into position, make sure your two locking tabs are facing straight up and down. The locking tabs should align with this rectangular notch. With it aligned, go ahead and press it into position. Listen for a click. I get a nice audible click from there. You should get a little bit of movement, but it should not be able to pull off of there. We'll continue on with our protective cover. Now as we get this into position, you want to make sure you have the clip straight up and down on the line. Press the two areas together and snap it in. There we are. That locks the line in this position so we're sure it will not come off while we're driving down the road. All right, the next thing that we want to do is make sure that you have no fuel or fuel residue on your hands. Make your way back over to the negative battery terminal. Reconnect that and then we'll hop inside the vehicle and attempt to start it up. You may find that it takes a couple extra cranks before it actually starts. Once it is running, we'll make our way out here and double check to make sure we don't have any leaks. Perfect. Let's make our way back here. Listen for our click from that. Close the latch. Now that we have that fuel cap in place, let's start up the vehicle. Double check to make sure we don't have any leaks. Perfect. Now we can get the cover on here. Align it with the mounting studs and the forward mounting hole. Looking at the shield itself, you can tell that you have two holes for those studs and then you have a small locating piton along the forward aspect that will plug right in here. Give the front a little wiggle before we put on those mounting nuts to make sure this is secured here. Okay friend, we've got the car back together. You've already checked for leaks. At this point, go ahead and close the hood and take your vehicle for a road test. Make sure you don't have a running condition and no check engine light. Aside from that, thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.